and welcome to Gourmet's Shed. Well this week we've got for you a low relief trees. Now most of you would be well aware of low relief structures in model railways and we usually do that to uh, conserve space uh, when there's very little depth between the track and the, uh, the background board. Um, and in most cases people who make low relief trees usually go about it by uh, getting a proprietary tree and literally slicing it in half uh, vertically so it can uh, go up against the background. Now that's fine, that's fine, there's no problem with that or if, even if you make your own trees you can uh, you can do that sort of thing where you trim off the back half of it and just stick it up against the uh, the background. Um, but what I've come up with is a slightly different system where we will print out an image of a tree and then uh, build the, uh, the tree up itself from the, the image so, uh, which I think conserves a bit more space as well and gives you quite a bit of scope uh, with uh, images that are available on the net and uh, especially the trunk and everything has a realistic look about it because it's a photograph. So we'll have a look at how we do that. Okay folks, this is uh, one I made earlier. This is a, a low relief tree, the one behind the, uh, the tractor there. Uh, that was printed out and then the uh, tree was made with the method I'm proposing. As we move up to it you can see it's got its um, trunk there and everything and branches etc. And it has a bit of depth to it as well and takes up very little space. Okay, the first thing we do, folks, is uh, print out our image. So we have to acquire an image, uh, hopefully off the internet. Uh, there's plenty of images available, so you um, download that, put it into your drawing program and size it to the size that you would like to use. And then you come to this stage where uh, you finish up with your image. And I'm going to stick it onto some serial card. So what I'll do is, is cut away you know, the rest of the page that I don't need here and only glue onto the uh, card what I really need. So we'll get that happening first. Okay folks, I've, uh, I've taken the image and glued it to the card and I've cut it down to the bare essentials, just the, the basic shape. Now I'm going to go around and cut out that in uh, more detail with the small pair of scissors later on. But you'll notice that the, uh, the areas in here where there's gaps and so on, especially down here where you can see light coming through the tree. What I'm going to do is go into these areas here with a hammer and a punch and I'm going to use a scrap piece of timber and just punch out those holes. Now they don't have to be exact but that's the easiest way to do it. I mean you could probably do it with a knife if you wanted to but uh, the hammer and punch is quite effective. And now I'm just using a punch that's got uh, a flat end on it uh, not the pointy ones, but it's just a flat end and it's not very big, which allows me to get into uh, some of the smaller areas. As I say, it doesn't have to be uh, fantastic detail, but uh, just punch through some of these areas and where you can see light coming through and where there's a hole. Now we can touch all this up later and possibly even the flocking that we're going to put on there will maybe even cover up some of these holes anyway so it could even be a waste of time doing this but it, it potentially uh, makes the tree look a lot better so I'll get on and do the rest of them 
Right folks, so I've got my holes cut out, you know, I haven't done it all, but I've made a few good holes in there. And now I'm going to go around with a small pair of scissors and I'm going to cut out the, uh, the basic shape of this tree. So, uh, I'll see you next week. <laughs> It'll take a little while. Right, there's my basic shape folks, and uh, anything where I've cut the card, any area where the card's been cut, I'm going to go over those edges with uh, green texture or brown texture, whatever suits the area. So I'll have to get all that done and uh, we'll come back. Now folks, we've got a, at least three different shades of green on that uh, tree there. And uh, I'll, I'll try and match it if I can, but I, I, I'm not really going really close to it. Uh, with what I've got at the moment, but um, yeah, we'll start with the, the bottom area, the darker tones, and then work our way into some different shades up here. And I'm just going to use the, the hairspray method spray the hairspray on, put the flocking on, go again, repeat, repeat, repeat until you've got what you want. Okay, folks, that's how it's come up. Um, it, it's pretty fragile, and uh, I handle it now with pliers and especially when it's going to be fitted onto the layout I'll use these little pointy nose these little suckers these little pointy nose pliers to hold it by the top here because you can always touch it up if you muck it up a bit and um, I'll turn it around and apply uh, PVA to the back of it and then I'll whilst holding it with the pliers and then I'll gently ease it onto the background uh, and that'll be it job done and uh, yeah, it's always best to um, try it out first, you know, before you do all the flocking and everything, just to see where you're probably going to put this thing. I should mention too that I've also gone back after I've done the flocking uh, with a little stick and I've pushed through some of the holes there so you can see gaps in the tree. So uh, yeah, next stage is to um, put it on the railway somewhere. There we are folks, it's, it's found a home on the railway. You can barely see the trunk. It's down there behind the uh, other shrubbery there. But um, yeah, it's just stuck onto the background. And uh, helps to add a bit more forestry to the, uh, to the railway. So there you are. Cheers, Cormo.